Oh my god. Yeah, add the NBA to the list of characters <laughs> that have killed off our beloved reptile. Fatality. Hey there, and welcome to episode three, round three of Wake Up Three. We are your hosts, Cam and Molly. Now, before we get into today's episode, we have to, of course, start out with a mix up. So, Cam is taking on the bulk of the episode today, and that leaves me with another chance to mix him up. So, um, my original mix up actually did not work out. We tried to record that and it didn't work out. So, we're starting from scratch. Side note. <laughs> See if I can survive this mix. This, this should be a fun one, I think. Shouldn't be too uh, too much pressure for you. Okay. So we recently passed uh, Father's Day. So I have a little hierarchy of fighting game dads for you, if you will. I present to you with a few choices. So you must choose between the two fighting game dads, as in which one do you think is the better dad? Which one would you have as your dad? Dad choices number one. Jax versus Heihachi. Oh boy. Um, I would pick Jax because he wouldn't throw me into a volcano. Ooh, good, yeah. But you wouldn't <laughs> learn the uh, Mishima style. That's you know, true. Okay that? That's true. I would learn, like, punching. You sure you, you good with passing Jax oh, to man. the next round? I feel like if I was... Uh, a son of Heihachi, I would turn into a big jerk somehow. Okay, so Jax moves on to round two. Ooh. Jax versus Geese Howard. Ooh. Now I'm going to eat my words because <laughs> Jax would be a better dad than Geese, but I want to train under Geese and uh, gain those abilities. I want those parries and those, those ground projectiles. Yeah, that, that is tempting and more than anything i want that forward heavy kick absolutely (laughs) one of my favorites for sure even though i would probably get like trashed Mm -hmm. like not not the best yeah i would parenting i would probably get broken down (laughs) uh and then reassembled into a rock howard i guess (laughs) <laughs> okay well i guess if that i guess that's what you're looking for here so <laughs> geese moves on to the final round oh, no. who will the final fighting game dad be to challenge geese who is it it's geese versus johnny cage Ooh. um i'm gonna go with johnny cage <laughs> of course johnny wins yeah johnny why is... wouldn't you want johnny to be <laughs> yeah he's i feel like he would be a to loving be dad your dad yeah. He'd be a loving dad. He might be kind of an idiot. But... And then you get to have Cage as your last name. True. And plus you get those green god-killing powers. Yep. So <laughs> you do get that. Kind of a bonus. Mm-hmm. I guess I made that pretty easy then, didn't I? But it was fun. Well, yeah, Did you was... have fun, at least? I thought it was fun. We've like... got a fun mix-up in the books. Yeah. Before we also get into the episode today... We're just going to update you real quick that last week we mentioned that MK1 stress test would be announced on Wednesday. That has been moved to Friday. So tomorrow, instead of yesterday, we will know who is in the stress test and who is not, which we all thought we were not today. (laughs) Now moving on to our episode about someone who we don't know if he has a dad. (laughs) Let's get into it. Reptile. So, Cam, get us into this beloved first secret character of all time. All right. Today I wanted to talk to you about Reptile because he is the very first secret character in fighting games. He's come a long way since his humble beginnings as the first secret character. So secret, in fact, that co-creator of Mortal Kombat, John Tobias, didn't even know about Reptile's inclusion in the beginning because it was something that Ed Boon had pulled on him. He didn't find out about it until players discovered him later. Very, very secret. How about that, Ed, right? Yeah, what a trickster. (laughs) He was just a palette swap of Scorpion and Sub-Zero, 
And with that, he didn't have his own special moves or anything. He just had variations of theirs. He had a slide, like Sub-Zero. He had a spear, like Scorpion. Then he also had a green version of Sub-Zero's Ice Ball. It would still freeze you on impact. In addition to that, he was also about twice as fast as the other ninjas, so he was very speedy from the get-go. 1992, in the very first Mortal Kombat game, it was just when he was a secret, non-playable character. Okay, so and the very beginning. The very was, beginning. He's been around. Yep. I mentioned he was like twice as fast as the other ninjas, and that's because he's meant to be a challenge. It's very hard to find him, so I feel like if you get there, like you want the challenge, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's not meant to be easy. How do we get to him, you might be asking yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, step one, you have to be fighting on the pit stage. So you don't get to choose stages in this game. You have to just fight until you're on the pit stage. Step two, there must be shadows moving across the moon, which doesn't always happen when you're on that stage. So you have to be on the stage, and then you have to hope the shadows are there. And then step three, you have to win that match that you're playing on that stage with a double flawless victory, and you can't use the block button the entire time. Oh. Okay. So you can't. There it is. There's the Mortal Kombat factor. <laughs> there's the Mortal Kombat factor. You're not allowed to block because blocking will get you nowhere. So all of those things, and then finally, you have to use your character fatality on whoever you're fighting after that on the pit stage. Not a stage fatality because then it'll screw the whole thing up and you have to start over. Oh so, boy. So yeah, use your character fatality, and then finally, after all that, if you fulfill these requirements, the message you have found me. Now prove yourself. Will show up on the top of the screen. And you'll be teleported to the bottom of the pit where you'll get to fight the green ninja reptile. That is so cool. Isn't it? <laughs> like, imagine back in the day, like, unlocking that. Yeah, that would be so cool. It spread through word of mouth because that's how it was back then. Right. Somebody found well, him. They didn't. They probably didn't even know how they did it the first time because they were probably just... Oh, yeah. They were probably just like, what? What just yeah, happened? Yeah, like, whoa, who is this? Like, how am I... I don't know. Was there... Do you think there was a hunt for a reptile? How could there be? They didn't know he existed, I guess. Yeah, right? the only hints that you would have gotten were, like, the whole, like top of the pit or yeah nobody would be looking because it was the first ever secret character in fighting games why would you think to be looking for a that would secret be so character? hard finding it then right wow so whoever yeah. was the first person to do that you are a legend i think it's really funny that john tobias didn't even know about his inclusion that was just I an ed moon little troll thing yeah so so tricky so tricky so yeah anyways as far as mortal kombat 1 goes his first appearance i should say mortal kombat 1 1992 um, yeah, <laughs> we don't want to confuse the two. We've got to keep the timeline separate. Right. So, Mortal Kombat 2, 1993. That is Reptile's first appearance as a playable character. This particular version of Reptile means a lot to me personally because he was my go-to character back in the day. And this was your first Mortal Kombat game. Right, yeah. Mortal Kombat 2 was the first MK game I had played. And I just remember thinking he was super cool. The Green Ninja... At the time, I didn't know about his secret origins in the past game. I was just oh, coming yeah, in new to that game, particularly MK2. And uh, I just thought, you know, this is the guy for me, I guess. <laughs> and uh, I remember specifically hearing whispers back in the day about how he sucked and he was, you know, he was the worst ninja on the roster. The other ones were better, whatever. Hmm. And uh, my response to that was pretty similar to what it would be today. Like, no, he's cool. He's a cool character. He's the best one. Mm -hmm. So like maybe he might not have been the most competitively viable or whatever, but he was always the best in my heart. And I feel like. Yeah. I, tearless I, be damned. Yeah. That's ex your, exactly. That's your motto. Exactly. <laughs> Plus as, you know, a six year old or whatever, I don't think I knew much about oh, tier lists. Exactly. So. Yeah. And I've got a character bio for his Mortal Kombat 2 version. So it says. Reptile. As Shang Tsung's personal protector, the elusive reptile lurks in the shadows, stopping all those who would do his master harm. His human form is believed to disguise a horrid reptilian creature whose race was thought extinct millions of years ago. Mm. So yeah, that's his bio. And then he gets some special moves of his own, and those are acid spit, force ball, slide, and invisibility. They're, they're like the essence of reptile. Mm -hmm. And then he's got two fatalities in that game just like the rest of the characters he's got one where he uh, it's called tongue lash he lashes his tongue out and eats the opponent's head mm -hmm. that's it and then the <laughs> second one is uh he turns invisible and slaps the opponent in half 
Okay, so, so. <laughs> that makes a comeback. <laughs> yeah, later. yeah, that yeah. makes a comeback later on. I know that's a favorite of yours, but yeah, that's that's a Mortal Definitely. Kombat 2 thing. One of his original fatalities was turning invisible and slapping them in half. And that brings us to Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, which was 1995. Okay, um, so a couple years later. Yep, two years later. <laughs> like uh, all of the other ninjas, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, etc., uh, he did not make the base roster of Mortal Kombat 3. He was just, just in the expansion. With that, he kept all his specials. You know, he had a fast and a slow version of the Force Ball, so he could control the speed of it, and with that, control the spacing on the screen a little bit better. Okay. And uh, he also had an elbow dash that switches sides with the opponent and knocks them down, which is something that he can still use in his modern appearances. So they've expanded him a bit. And his character bio in 3 is a little bit different here. It says... Always a reliable servant to Shao Kahn, Reptile is chosen to assist Jade in the capture of Katana. In contrast of Jade's instructions, Reptile is ordered to stop the renegade princess at all costs, even if it means her death. Wow. So. So Reptile's got a big role in 3. Yeah, you may have noticed that I said he was working for Shao Kahn this time. Yes, I did. And, so uh, another big bad. Yeah, another big bad. And then his fatalities are very similar to the ones in Mortal Kombat 2. He's got an acid puke, which covers the opponent <laughs> and uh, turns them to bones. And then he's got a multi-bite fatality that's very similar to his tongue lash, where he just sticks his tongue out three times and eats their head, their shoulders, their legs. They're gone. That's it. Okay. So he just, it's like a three bite one where it's just boom, 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 they're gone. We're going to Mortal Kombat 4, which was from 1997. They changed up Reptile's appearance a little bit. And in MK4, he looks like a straight up weirdo. Oh. He is wearing. Hot take. He's wearing, yeah, this is maybe this may, <laughs> this might be a hot take. But, uh, Some people might think he looks like a straight up cool guy. Yeah, let me know if uh, if this if this Mortal Kombat 4 version of Reptile is your favorite, anybody, because I personally think he looks like the weirdest little dude. And I say that because <laughs> he's wearing, first off, we all know that Reptile wears green. He's wearing a green ninja outfit in his first three appearances. In Mortal Kombat 4, he's not wearing any green. Instead, he's full scaly, so he's a scaly man now. He used to be humanoid. Now he's wearing purple pants, silver gloves and boots, a silver cod piece, and then a black, like, deep-cut V-neck tank top. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, yeah, that's what you get for Reptile in MK4. So, yeah, quite a change. Not the Reptile you knew right. before Right, not at, at all. all. Different color scheme, different... I wonder what inspired them to change it so wildly. Just a very different vibe. And it's definitely weird. I wouldn't say it's his worst appearance, but it is mm. far from his best. Okay. Uh, his MK3 style, like, padded ninja look is his alternate in that game. So if you would prefer, you can have the padded look, but he still does have, like, scaly arms and a scaly face. Right, okay. So... That's when you start to see like more of a modern reptile where you're familiar with him, but it is his alternate. His character bio in this one, he's serving somebody else this time. Oh boy. Right. Reptile the servant. Yeah. Reptile the always... The little henchman. All serving or whatever. Yeah. It says, A general in Shinnok's army of darkness, Reptile once belonged to an extinct race of reptilian creatures. He was banished to the nether realm for committing genocide against several species, responsible for the death of millions. Reptile is a dangerous ally to the forces of evil. Wow. These bios keep just... It's a roller coaster. Right? I, yeah, I thought you would be uh, kind of surprised by that one. Yeah. I mean, what? they've all been... I feel like from one to the next, it's been like, whoa, what's he doing now? Who's, yeah. Who's he serving now? Yeah, like just a few, you know, a few games ago, he was just a humble protector. Yeah, now he he's committing just like genocide. Shang Tsung's best little guy. Yeah. And now, and now he's killed millions. He's banished. He's banished wow. to the Nether Realm for committing genocide against millions. Sheesh. So wow. Like, I need to see. Uh, is this ever going to be in a Mortal Kombat movie? Like even a. If this is in like one of the animated ones, I'm I'm in. I'm all in. I'm watching that one. Yeah, honestly, I'd like to see <laughs> Reptile as a true threat in something. Yeah, I I guess. He... I, I, yeah, like I, I want to see it, but I, I don't want to see it. it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm conflicted because I love him and right. I, I would rather just... He's so great. Yeah. Keep him okay. safe and I don't know. <laughs> Anyways. All right, so that bio is crazy. Yeah, that's absolutely nuts. I thought that one would catch you off guard. Definitely the craziest one yet. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And honestly, I feel like 
it gets crazier from here oh my in goodness. further games. He is, Reptile is a very complex character, it turns out. So mm. he's he's had a lot of roles in the story. Anyways, special moves. I feel like they're a little bit less impressive this time around. He's got an acid spit still. It actually spreads out and covers a little bit more like floor distance. So you um, could make like a trail. Yeah, you could you could leave a little trail. Okay. Um, he has his invisibility. That's back. He has a new dash punch. And then he has a new move called Super Crawl, where he gets down on his hands and knees and crawls really fast across the floor and knocks you down. Oh, wow. Weird move. Very weird move. If you have the time, why don't you look up that MK4 Super Crawl move from Reptile, because it's, mm. it's goofy. Add a Super Crawl to your day. He has no slide special. He has no oh. force balls. Oh. oh. That's all he's got. Okay. He, he's, so he's pretty limited. Um, you weren't lying. Right. And then his fatalities. Am I ready for this? I think so. Okay. <laughs> His fatalities are called face chew and uh, acid burn. I feel like I don't really even need to describe those because they're pretty much just... What they say. They're what they, they say. Yeah, they're exactly what they sound like. They're pretty basic. Okay. Kind of just retreads of like the two and three fatalities. It sounds like it. So anyways, that's what you get for MK4 Purple Pants Reptile. It was the first game they weren't using sprites in. They were doing 3D mm -hmm. models. It was still released in arcades, but it was the final arcade game. And then okay. it was released on... Uh, PlayStation 1 and Nintendo 64. Well, it's kind of one of those like bridging the gap games because it's arcade yeah. still and then <laughs> two other systems. Yeah, so cool. it's it's something that's very unique. Yeah. It's I mean, it's a product of its time. Right. So you may not think it's the best game in the world, but you have to look at it from the lens of how did this play in 1997? We played it once uh, actually at a Mortal Kombat convention. Right, we and, did the cabinet at yeah, Combat I, Con. Yeah, and that was a lot of fun. So even mm. even though it's different, it's not the sprite-based game that we all knew at that time. Anyways. Was that all on MK4? That is all for MK4. Oh, okay. Next up, MK5. They didn't actually call it that, <laughs> but uh, yeah. MK, What's MK5 known as? MK5 is known as Deadly Alliance. Mm -hmm. I feel like they were going to use like a V originally, like Mortal Kombat Vengeance or something, but ended up calling it Deadly Alliance. Out in 2002, so it's a five-year gap. Ooh, so a bit of a jump. Yep, a little bit of a jump. And during this time, he gets a new appearance once again. And like I said, it gets worse. This is what I was talking about. Is this the pit? Are we at the bottom of the pit? This is it. This is it. I guess I might be offending someone. Let me know if this is your favorite reptile. I guess prove me wrong. But I can't <laughs> it's imagine... It's definitely someone's favorite reptile. I can't imagine it being anyone's favorite. He looks like a full-on alligator in a ninja suit. This is the one where he has like a pointy gator head and a long tail, and he's got spikes coming off his back. Oh, so he's like full-on. Yeah, he's like full-on reptilian. They've totally embraced. Yeah, like I said, scales. he he kind of looks like an alligator in a ninja suit. Like he's just. Oh wow. He's yeah, pointy <laughs> lizard head and long, long tail. With a new look comes a new character bio. So deadly alliance reptile. It says. Reptile has discovered the plot devised by Shang Tsung and Quan Chi to assassinate Shao Kahn. But on his way to inform his master, he was distracted by a vampire woman named Natara. She led him to the hidden base camp of Katana's forces. Knowing the location of the base would have been a great help to the Emperor in the war against Adenia and the Shokan. Eager to relay all that he had learned, Reptile raced back to Shao Kahn's fortress, only to discover him lying dead on the throne room floor. So this bio is more of like a story piece. Yep. And it actually, that was only the first part of it. Oh, There's okay. a little bit more here. It says... Yeah, I was going to say, you're leaving me hanging here oh, with this nope. dead child. There's problem. more. There's more. <laughs> okay. Get a lot of story stuff in Deadly Alliance and then going forward. I think this is where they started expanding the character stories. It says, Reptile's detour to Katana's base camp had delayed him just long enough for Shang Tsung and Quan Chi to spring their attack on Shao Kahn. Reptile was devastated that he had failed his master and wandered the outworld wastelands aimlessly until he once again crossed paths with Natara. Desperately in need of a master, he offered his loyalty to her. Her first command to him was to attack the invader from Earthrealm, Cyrax. She explained oh. that he must first destroy his arm panel in order to weaken the outsider. So that's his character bio going in. We'll get to... Is there more? There's more. Okay. There's that His ending actually uh, ties that up and is... We'll talk about that in a little bit. That'll be the last part we talk about for Deadly Alliance. Also, one other thing, the endings aren't always canon to what happens in the story. They're usually just like a random thing. Reptiles is the most canon. It leads directly into the events of the next game, like for that whole game. Oh, okay. So, so his is like the exception to yeah, this. Yeah, his new... is important. 
And okay. I'll get to what the ending is after I talk about what he can do a little bit more. He's got the acid spit. It's just a straight shot once again. And he's got a new attack called Lizard Ball. It's basically a Kano Ball. Oh, so you can just okay. full screen Lizard Ball, hit someone with it. Uh, that's it for specials. He's got those too. They're really yeah. just dumbing down <laughs> Reptile's repertoire. They're, yeah, they don't... They've at, they've given him moves over time, and now they're just stripping them down. Yep, that's right. Is there a reason for that? The reason would be that in that game it was about stances, so you could you had two oh, different fighting styles, that, okay, and you could also pick up weapons that were lying around the arena. So it was a three D fighter with a slightly different approach. A lot of the characters had less special moves, but I feel like most of them had more than two. Yeah, I was gonna ask, was it ju- was it just an all around character theme? But no, they're giving Reptile some. Special treatment, we'll say. Yeah, we'll say that. In Deadly Alliance, characters only had one fatality each, so he's only got one in this game. And this time, he acid pukes on the opponent's face and then eats their head. So, kind of a combo of the two things he's always doing. Yeah, we wanted to talk about that character ending. I told you it was substantial here. We'll see if you're ready for it. Okay. So, once you beat the game as Reptile... He enters this chamber, and it says, Despite the strong sulfurous stench that filled the chamber, Reptile could smell that Natara and Cyrax had been there recently. There was no sign of them now, except for some scattered glass, and a residual trace of strong magical energies. His revenge would have to wait. Suddenly, an expectant hush filled the chamber as energy cascaded around what appeared to be a dragon embryo. The tiny dragon stretched, and the egg cracked. A beam of energy ripped out from inside and lanced into Reptile. His world was filled with roaring power as his squamous body was twisted and transformed. The ancient prophecy had been fulfilled. The Dragon King had returned. Yeah. Um, wow? Yeah. So wow. Reptile gets turned into the Dragon King. And at this point, we don't know what that is because the story is still in development. Right. So. For Reptile fans at that point... First off, things are just getting weirder for the guy, <laughs> for the reptile. Yep. You're maybe you're losing the I, essence of reptile, but you're getting maybe some superpowers. We'll see as we get into Mortal Kombat <laughs> Deception, Ooh. because as far as we know right now, this is reptile's ending, and that is the end of the Deadly Alliance reptile story. Okay, so you're just gonna have to wait and see. That's right. So 2004 comes around two years later. A reptile is not playable in Deception. What happened? What? He just got an upgrade, right? Wrong. He's too strong. No. no. He actually transformed completely into the final boss of that game, Onaga, the Dragon King. So his body was just used as a vessel for the final boss. And Excuse he does not me? appear. Excuse <laughs> How much does it hurt? Reptile is a sacrifice, a vessel? Yeah. Oh he, my. Yeah, he gets lured there, and oh. he just gets turned into... He's a oh, vessel. reptile. He, yeah, he's masterless. He's wandering around, you know, look, looking for purpose. He's hmm. devolving into more of a reptilian lizard form over this time, so he's kind of losing himself. So the reptilian form, that's happening because he's not with Shang Tsung anymore? Or? He's... Uh, I don't know if that's the exact reason, but it, oh. the original lure was that the longer he spent away from Zatera, okay. the further he would like devolve. And it's been a long time since he's been there, since his race is wiped out and destroyed and all that. I wonder so. if we'll ever get to go there. I'd like to. I, I would like to. If if Reptile's in MK1, which I think he'll be in it, I would love to see his home planet. Yeah, I want to see a planet of reptiles. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyways, uh, 2004... Not playable. So that's it. That's and all. And he's just a different person. And do yeah, they address that in that game? They, they do in the uh, in the story mode. And okay. I want to say they show it in like the introduction of the game. So when you first turn it on, you see, oh, hey, there's Reptile. Oh, wait, he's being transformed. <laughs> oh, Never mind. okay. He's gone forever. Okay. Then uh, Mortal Kombat Armageddon comes around. And this game is the game on PlayStation 2 that had every character at that point in it. And because of that, it had a lot of content, but all of the characters 
kind of lost their personalities because of that because they were just trying to put in as much as they could so i feel like oh. characters don't have like the personality for example there are actually no unique fatalities in the game at oh. all no one has a unique fatality because they did something called create a fatality oh uh, that's a new thing it's a new thing and it was only a one-time thing that never came back thankfully don't have a whole lot to talk about in terms of armageddon that was just the one that everybody was in he is in the game he's back he's Kind of a vaguely humanoid form again. He still okay. has the reptilian skin. He doesn't have the tail anymore or the weird pointy head. Okay. It would be kind of like a... It's kind of like the MK4 look a little bit, but with like an updated, actually green outfit. He's got the specials you'd expect. The acid spit, the invisibility, the elbow dash. And then he's got lizard ball, the cano ball move. As a game itself, it's pretty fun because, like I said, you can pick everybody. You right. can also create your own characters. So mm -hmm. game itself, it's cool, but... Yeah, in terms of like giving each character personality, it's kind of lacking. Is that also a 3D game? That is. That was the uh, that was the final 3D era game. Okay. So that was 2006. Uh, 2008 comes around, and that was Mortal Kombat versus DC, the eighth installment of Mortal Kombat, and uh, he's not in it. So hmm. that is all. We are going to say about Mortal Kombat versus DC today. <laughs> it's not relevant to our reptile information. Not today. Maybe we'll talk about it another day. Another time. But yeah, no reptile. Next time. No perhaps. talk. <laughs> okay, Garrus. Moving on to 2011, this was the very first Nether Realm produced Mortal Kombat. Yeah. And it was just called Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat 2011, also known as MK9, reptile is back. Just like a lot of the classic characters, they brought back all the classics. It's you know, if you know, you know. Yeah, I think the MK9 roster is pretty beloved. In this game, his appearance is much closer to the last game, being just a scaly man with like a green ninja-esque armor. I like it. Once again, they made a step in the right direction. So I feel like the last one, it was decent because it didn't have a tail and all that. And then in this one, I feel like the face looks a little bit better. The armor looks a little bit better. We're going somewhere good with this reptile. Does he have the option to be human? Yes, there is the classic MK1 style, like, like padded shoulder look kind of thing. He does have that, and he is human in that. That's his first human appearance since the original trilogy? Yeah, so since 95, he hadn't been human in appearance. Wow. So That's a total of, like, what, 16 years? 16 years, yeah. 16 years reptile spent as just a reptile. Yeah. And, uh, and now you have the option to be human again. Right. I personally like his alternate the most, and... Uh, I'll have to link to a picture of that or something. I love his alternate for MK9. I think it's such a cool look. He does get a biography in this game. All right, MK9 Reptiles bio says, his home realm of Zaterra is gone, mysteriously destroyed ages ago. Reptile is the last known surviving member of his race. He has since made Outworld his home. Shao Kahn has made use of Reptile's mastery of stealth to spy on suspected traitors and slay known enemies of the empire. But the knowledge that he is the last of his kind gnaws at Reptile. He would give anything, kill anyone, if it would bring his realm back from the abyss. Self-pity fuels his aggression as he inflicts suffering and death upon others. Oh. So okay. in this one, he seems to have his own motivation. He is working for someone once again. Mm -hmm. Shao Kahn is his master. He's a mastery of stealth. He's a killer. But he's kind of back to that life of like, I'm a protector. I'm just kind of like the watchdog for Shao Kahn. Like yeah. Like rooting out any threat to the Empire. Right, but he does have that, that feeling in the back mm -hmm. of his head, like, man, it's I would give... It's gnawing at him. I, lo I love yeah. that they use that word for Reptile's yeah. bio. Yeah, it's... Good job, Nether yep. Realm. Yep, <laughs> it is. So um, Reptile's a bit more moody. Now. He's a bit more moody, and I feel like he's... He's got, he's got a mood. Yeah, and he sounds like he's a little bit more complex already, because mm -hmm. he has kind of a personal vendetta, or a right. personal goal, at least. Special moves, they go all out this time. They give him his acid slow force balls, slide, acid spit, invisibility, elbow dash, and then a new move called acid hand where he uh, does kind of a back turn, turn around slap, and then slaps you in the face with a little acid ball. I yes. think it's cool. It's yeah, it's a it physical, like... it's like a physical attack, but it's just, I don't know, it's kind of like a sassy little back turn acid slap. Right, I like, like it. Even, even from the sound of it, it sounds like a fun, fun addition to what Reptile can already do. He's a combo king in that game with the force balls, with the uh, the slide and all that. So, I mean, he's he's the reptile you would expect from those old games where mm -hmm. he's great at combos. He's really good at the juggles. He's that reptile. He's finally back to form. He's, he's, he's the best. He's all that and more. Yeah, he's that, he's that reptile. Mm -hmm. He's been 
he's been, been through, through it. it. Yeah, he's <laughs> been through it, and he's uh, he's kind of returning to form now, finally. It's the best he's looked in a long time. Story-wise, he doesn't really get to do anything cool, unfortunately. In the MK9 story mode, he gets beaten by Johnny Cage in the first tournament, and Kawhi Liang Sub-Zero in the second tournament, and Striker during the Earthrealm Invasion. I love Striker, but that one kind of hurts me to, to see, you know, because mm-hmm. Red is so cool, and he doesn't get a single win in the story mode at all. Gameplay-wise and appearance-wise, he's probably the coolest he's ever been, but story-wise, he's still just a punching bag. Yeah, you don't love to see that as a Reptile fan, but his <laughs> no, appearance overall is pretty cool, so we'll take it. And the MK9 story is just so good. Like, that's a whole... That's probably a multi-part episode in the future. Oh, yeah, but, absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll just, we'll just accept that and move on. And then lastly, his mk9 fatalities he's got one where he pukes in the opponent's face before tearing out their stomach so he just grabs their stomach rips it out he's got one where he turns invisible claws the opponent's throat and stomach and then forms a force ball inside their gut that explodes them and then finally he has a third one in this game it's a classic it's the classic tongue lash where he lashes his tongue out and he eats their head all right. So he's got three fatalities this time covers all the bases of what you've always known and love eating them acid puking on them all that fun stuff. Moving on to MKX, 2015, four years later. We've got a similar appearance to MK9 Reptile, only with more bones on the armor. He's got a new mask that opens up so he can spit without removing the mask. But yeah, he's just got a lot of bones on the armor. I love this look, and I think overall, out of everything we've ever gotten, the MKX Reptile is probably my favorite appearance-wise. All right. Yeah. He once again gets a new character bio in this game. It's pretty short. It says here, Reptile's home realm of Zotero was conquered and assimilated long ago by the Outworld Emperor Shao Kahn, leaving Reptile the sole survivor. Reptile has since served Outworld's rulers faithfully, biding his time until he can find a way to recreate his raptor race. Reptile possesses many reptilian traits, which make him a formidable foe. So it does actually say that he, his home was conquered by Shao Kahn's army. Yeah. Long, they, and he still works for Shao Kahn by yep, his time. Yep. So at least, well, this says he works for Outworld's leaders. Because as you know, in MKX, there's he, a different Khan in town. That is true. He was loyal to Shao Kahn when he was the emperor. He's mm-hmm. not around these days. Mm-hmm. Now it's Kotal. So. Hey, hey. Hey, it's Kotal. Kotal's <laughs> here. He's not only, like, bothered by that, but he's planning to start his race again at some point. Yeah, he's trying to figure they're, out a way to bring them so back. So by MKX, they're letting us know, hey, Reptile, is he means business. Like, he's going to try to bring the Zaterans back. Yeah, so maybe maybe MKX is the first time we'll actually see Reptile get a little bit of respect. Hmm. We'll see. Oh, was that a reference to respect points? MKX? No, it actually wasn't, but uh, <laughs> nice one. <laughs> He's got a ton of specials in it. He's got five different kinds of force balls. He's got a slow, medium, fast, a delayed one where he can like hold it for a second and then let it go. He's got one that floats in place. He's got his slide back. It's better than ever. He can enhance it. He's got claw pounce, bounce, swipe, slash, elbow dash, smash. He's got various stages of invisibility. He's got the ability to slow down time and the actions of his opponents on screen. He's got a poison cloud that lingers around him and deals damage over time. He's got options. MKX is sounding like the most expansive game yet for in terms of Reptile's moveset. Yeah, absolutely. He can do more here than he's ever been able to do. I think the ability to slow down time in addition to his force ball use is super cool. He can like full screen carry people. Yeah. Uh, his juggles are out of this world. He can keep you in the air for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's cool. He's got a lot going on for him in that game. Story-wise... He shows up a couple times to just get beaten up by the combat kids. Mm-hmm. That's all. That's the only times he shows up is just to get beaten up by the combat kids. Sounds familiar. Yeah. He definitely deserves better. Respect points for Reptile, zero. That's kind of the end of his story as far as we know right now because that was his last appearance as a playable character. His fatalities in this game in MKX. He's got one where he pukes on the opponent's face and then dashes forward to tear their head in half. It's uh, it's goofy because he just splits it right in half down the middle and then just lets him fall down. But 
I feel like it's endearing because it just shows off Reptile's eagerness. I feel like it's always one of those weird ones, but it makes me laugh. I like it. I like it too. He's got one other one where he ukes a huge acid puddle onto the ground underneath the opponent, and then they sink into it, and as they're sinking, he tongue lashes their head and tears it off. So, return to the classic. He's got that yet again. Brutalities? They've got a ton of brutalities in MKX. There's like five or six per character, so I'm not going to go through every single one of his brutalities. But I wanted to go back to that Mortal Kombat 2 Fatal that I talked about before. The uh, turn invisible and slap you in half one, Mm -hmm. slap the opponent in half. It came from MK2, and that is back in 10, and I feel like it's better than ever. It's such a fun brutality. When was the last time you would have seen a brutality? MK3. Oh, wow. Okay, so brutalities really (laughs) took a break. Uh, That is all for MKX. Okay. And uh, MK11 comes around, Mortal Kombat 11, 2019. He's in that game a little bit, but he's not playable. His slide is a part of Shang Tsung's moveset, and you can find him in the crypt and hit him with a hammer. And uh, that is all you get for Reptile and MK11. You get a slide, and you get to beat him with a hammer. Now, why did they do that? Disrespect. There's a special element to that, too, in the crypt. You have to be looking through Kenshi's blindfold. Yep. Then you find out that he's invisible, just chilling there. He's just yeah, like... Yeah, you'll hear, like, little scrapes and, like, s- sniffs. Yeah, and it... Little you, scuffles. Yeah, and it's cool because when you open up, I guess when you go into Sento Vision mode or whatever and look at Reptile, he's just kind of, like, scratching at the ground, looking at bugs, just kind of, like, crouched down, minding his own business. Yeah, he's just, like, hanging out. Yeah. Biding his time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. And yeah, you just walk up and beat him with a hammer, and you can do that ten times before he just disappears and stops showing up. Whack a reptile, I guess. I don't know. Disrespect. Just, just yeah. <laughs> and uh, that concludes his... Uh, his appearances? His appearances in the story, in the games. He is in a lot of other games and media. I wanted to cover a little bit of that. In the 1995 Mortal Kombat live-action movie, he is... In that one, he gets his own theme song, and uh, it slaps if you haven't heard it. (laughs) It's really good. It's so good. And then uh, he also gets what I would consider the best fight scene in that movie. It was added on later after test audiences had seen, like, first cuts of the MK movie and basically said that it didn't have enough fight scenes in it. Mm -hmm. So they went back and they added that one. He wasn't even going to be in the movie originally. He fights Liu Kang, and he gets killed. That's, That's it. But I feel like the, yeah, that overall fight scene is... It's the coolest. It's probably the most hype fight scene in that movie. It really is. I watched that scene recently and uh, tried to count how many times Reptile hits Liu Kang before Liu Kang gets a single hit in, and it's more than 10. Oh my goodness. Like, he is assaulting Liu Kang so hard. Yeah, he uh, first shows up and kicks him through a concrete wall. Love it. And then as Liu Kang is uh, like standing back up, he gets kicked in the face by Reptile as he's jumping through that hole in the wall. Yeah. And wake then he up just, denied. Yeah, yeah. So no wake up there. <laughs> um, Reptile's all, all on it. He's on top of him. And uh, yeah, he gets him about 10 times in a row at least before uh, Liu Kang makes contact. Such a good scene. Yeah, it's, it's pretty great. But unfortunately, he gets killed. And then 1997, he is in the sequel to that movie, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. He's in the very beginning of it in kind of a flashback scene. He fights Raiden in it, and it's actually uh, three different reptiles because it's supposed to be other members of his race, but they all look just like him. Raiden just kills them all. They're all dead. Reptile appears in one episode of the 1998 live-action series, Mortal Kombat Conquest, where he fights Shadow Priests and gets killed. Common theme with Reptile. Reptile is in the 2020 animated movie, Mortal Kombat Scorpion's Revenge. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was a jump, wasn't it? Yeah, he's not really in any other ones. <laughs> okay. There, there weren't a whole lot of like movies and stuff made for a long time. In 2020, he is in the animated movie, Scorpion's Revenge, where he fights Sonya Blade and gets killed. Hmm. And then one year later, he appears in the 2021 live-action movie, where he gets killed by Kano. How many characters can kill Reptile in it's, this in this series? They really want to 
push and try to find out, don't they? Yeah, they spin a little wheel. Like, who has not killed Reptile yet? Yeah, who's turning to kill, kill him next? Who's gonna kill Reptile next? <laughs> Please so. don't be doing that. <laughs> Please don't kill a Reptile in Mortal Kombat One. <laughs> Let him start his race again. Yeah. Please. Make that the focal point of the story. Make that the whole thing yeah. that Liu Kang's here to do. He's like, you guys thought I was going to make a new era? Psych, I'm here to give Reptile a spotlight that he's deserved for decades. For 30 years now. Like He's deserved Jeez. a lot better for <laughs> literally 30 years. Yeah, that is it for like movie appearances and stuff. Did want to mention one other appearance, though. In a game, not a Mortal Kombat game. Reptile was one of four secret Mortal Kombat characters that were playable in the first couple revisions of NBA Jam Tournament Edition on the arcade. So you would be able to pick Reptile, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, or Raiden. You'd pick two of those characters and you would play basketball against another team. Um, Um, What year was this? This was 1993. He's one of four Mortal Kombat characters because Midway was also the company that put out the NBA Jam game, so they put in secret characters whenever they wanted to. I'm pretty sure you could also play as Ed Boon in that game. Anyways, uh, we need to have an Ed Boon counter on here that like <laughs> dings every time we say his name. But yeah, these characters were only selectable in the original arcade releases. They were never on any home consoles, and there's a reason for that. It's because the NBA requested that they were removed. Oh. So you could say that the NBA killed Reptile. Oh my god. Yeah, add the NBA to the list of characters that have killed off our beloved reptile. Yep, yep, that is right. So, (laughs) he has been killed off so many times in so many ways, and it's unfortunate as a reptile fan. Um, I'm hoping that going into Mortal Kombat 1, he'll get announced very soon. That would be great. And I'm hoping that he is just cooler than ever and finally gets a spotlight in the story where he gets to stand his own ground and do something cool yeah maybe not just get killed right please don't kill reptile in don't Kombat just 1. use reptile for fatality fodder please <laughs> so will he be in mortal Kombat one we'll see follow along with us on uh hashtag reptile watch <laughs> as far as reptile related content as of now that's all i've got okay well what a legendary first ever secret fighter yeah for a secret character he's got quite the legacy i mean he's got 30 years of legacy i would say that he his existence spawned the rest of the ninja the palette swap it just yeah i feel like if it weren't for reptile he's kind of like that domino piece tipping over and yeah it's true then you get ermac and rain and noob and true maybe uh smoke (laughs) Maybe if he hadn't been there, it would have just been Sub-Zero and Scorpion, and that would have been Maybe. it. Maybe. Maybe. I guess, you know, there we'll were never two know. all along, so. Right. Yeah, we'll never know. Only only Ed Boon really knows. Yep, that's right. That concludes the reptile portion of our episode today. Let's hit you with some updates in the fighting game community. We have been seeing a quite a prominent roster leak for MK1, so we want to talk about that. Take it with a grain of salt. None of this is confirmed. We're just having some fun. Right, right. Well, I'm just going to read to you off the off the roster here. So our known characters, Shang Tsung, Sub-Zero, Kenshi, Katana, Liu Kang, Johnny, Kung Lao, Melina, Scorpion, and then here are the leaks. Okay. We've got Cyrax, Sector, hmm. Human Smoke, okay. Reiko, Reptile. Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Oh, I forgot to say Raiden, so Raiden's in there. <laughs> he's, not a, he's not a leak. We know he's in there. Yeah, he's whatever. Um, we've also got Havoc, Ashra, a female version of Nightwolf. That'd be cool. There's some... There's some Nightwolf lore behind that if you're like, huh? So there's female Nightwolf. That's interesting. Yeah, like an ancestor of some kind. Right. That'd be cool. Sindel, Natara, Tanya, Lee Mei, Jade, and then two slots are for brand new characters, which I believe you and I were under the impression that we wouldn't be seeing original characters to the MK1 roster, but... 
you know, yeah. maybe. We'll maybe. see. I didn't think we would be getting any brand new characters either because there's already so many to choose from. And mm-hmm. it being MK1, I thought they would want to start with characters that are already around. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Maybe they'll give us a new like pink ninja or something. Mm-hmm. And then this does not include a leak for the cameo roster. I'm pretty sure the cameo roster, any like infographics out there right now are just like speculations because I have seen some of those. I've seen a few of those. Ed Boon has done some interviews since with the gameplay trailer and everything. So we have some comments from him that we want to speculate a bit as well. All right, what do we got? Well, first off, with this leak, do you think any of that holds any salt? I don't know. I've seen the same leak going around on Reddit that you're talking about, Uh and uh, a lot of people seem to believe it, but I don't know. I'm not really sure where the info came from. To me, it sounds like a pretty decent roster. It would be... I mean, I would be happy with it. Characters like Reptile, the robots, Smoke. Some of it certainly sounds plausible yeah definitely some of it certainly could be a lot of these characters are a possibility but ed boon has made some comments recently okay that makes some characters not a possibility anymore so let's get into that in some interviews um ed boon addressed the combat kids so the combat kids were kind of up in the air for in a lot of our minds yeah they are the children of Johnny, Sonia, Jax, Kenshi, and the nephew to Kung Lao. Yeah. So four four youngins that are introduced in MKX. Ed Boon has confirmed that they are not born yet in the MK1 new mm. era. Hmm. So that mm. rules them out as main roster? Possibly. Does it rule them out as cameo, though? Because... Ed Boon has also said that a lot of cameo characters would be characters who would not be possible to be a fully playable character. Okay, so maybe because they're not So kind of just like, yeah, maybe. Hmm. Um, I did have another theory on that, though. Depending on how the story ends up, maybe we'll get some of them as DLC. Yeah, that could be. Because we could end up, you know, maybe Shang Tsung is showing up and he's going to stir the pot. And what do you think? uh, I don't know. I almost think that there's a chance that uh, he could be trolling because, you know, it's all good. That's what he he does. So I almost feel like it could be one of those things where, like, he says they're not born yet. But he means they're not born yet at the start of Mortal Kombat 1. And by the time, maybe by the time the story is concluded, something will have happened to bring them in. Even if it's just them being brought in from another realm and still meeting the young Johnny Cage or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how that'll work, but I feel like they can still show up in the story. So you are kind of on board with the DLC speculation? Maybe. Maybe. Like they they could end up being through the story? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think they could. That's kind of what I was thinking. Now, when I said that he, Ed Boon mentioned cameo characters are going to be characters that aren't possible to be a fully fleshed out playable character that could also mean some other people who are you thinking that could mean or is Um, this just a troll comment i think it has some credence to it i think it could be characters that they would either not be able to animate in the regular game because of the way fatalities and fatal blows and stuff work Mm -hmm. like characters that are a little bit less humanoid so it would be difficult for that like motaro okay um the four-legged centaur man yep that would be very hard to animate in a way where you'd be able to juggle him or do fatals that knock him in the air or whatever without it looking super dumb and goofy so maybe it'll be things like that or maybe it'll be like little characters like chucky Uh, i've seen people ask for him i don't think he would work as a main character because he's so small but you could could assist yeah he could be an assist that you just like throw at the opponent or something some definitely some Food for thought from Ed Boon's comments, yeah. Ed Boon's new little hints that he's given. I also wanted to mention Tyler Lansdowne confirmed that he was asked about modern controls, um, an equivalent of modern controls being introduced in MK1 to kind of compete with what Street Fighter Six has brought to the table. He pretty much deconfirmed there won't be any change to the way that Mortal Kombat plays. They're happy with 
the way they have it set up with the dial-up system. They feel that that's accessible enough, so there we have some clarification on that. Aside from the MK1 news, let's update you on our Street Fighters. <laughs> yeah, we kind of mentioned uh, the modern controls there, so let's yeah, update you yeah. on our Street Fighter 6 journeys. Yeah. It's been another week, and uh, we've been playing, playing a lot more ranked since yeah, we last spoke. Are you still sticking with Jury? Yeah, I've still been sticking with Jury. She's really the only person I've played as uh, for the last couple of weeks now. And uh, there have been times where it's been tough, where I'll just go on these really disheartening losing streaks. But uh, yeah, I've been sticking it out, and I feel like I've been I've been learning over time. I can definitely feel my my game improving a little bit. But this being the first like Street Fighter game that I've put like the real work into where I've taken it seriously. Mm -hmm. See, I've got some way to go, like a ways to go, but yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm making a little progress here. What about, what about your Jamie experience? You've been putting, yeah, you've been, you've been putting (laughs) a lot of, a lot of time into Jamie and ranked lately. How's that been going for you? Yeah. A lot of development going on with that. So I told you guys last week that I went online for the first time as Jamie, kind of got my foot in the door and got my, what do they call that? Like your placement? Yeah. So you do like 10 matches and then they figure out, okay, this is how much you suck. So you're, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. In my case, it was that way because as you know, this is my first Street Fighter game. I've never, I'm totally new to it, but yeah. I've been playing more online. I've been doing more ranked and... I think my left hand is finally recovering from this new position. I play Street Fighter 6 different than any other fighting game I play. I have my own button set up. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know yeah. if it's... Yeah, the way you've know. mapped it is different. So. Yeah. yeah. So I've been, like, getting used to that. And honestly, like, yeah, my left hand was suffering for a couple days there. Um, getting my little D-pad callus back on my thumb, so that's good. <laughs> Can anybody else um, relate to that, or yeah. is that just a weird thing that we have? I don't know. But, um, <laughs> what else can I say about Jamie? Yeah, I feel like I've just been kind of just getting, like, learning more in depth the character than yeah. than last, I, last we spoke. Been getting your drink on. Yeah. <laughs> Very much so. Been drinking real quick. You've been learning the the all-around mechanics of the game a little bit deeper as well. (laughs) The whole, like, drive system with the drive rush, the drive impact, drive Oh, yeah. There's so much to take in. There's a lot. You've been improving in that area as well. And uh, that's just going to make you, like, a stronger player in general the further you, you know, the further you get into it. My uh, little banner is hates lectures, so (laughs) I've been pretty resistant to... uh, the studying if you will but cam's kind of you know <laughs> drop me some hints here and there like i'll be like what that's how you do that because you know <laughs> yeah. i'm brand new yep. but i would say yeah quite a jump from last week for me in terms yeah. of my jamie progress so i'm feeling pretty good i really like i think i I think I like the character that I landed on, so. That's good, yeah. I mean, as long as you're having fun, I feel like that's the most important thing. And then, mm-hmm. yeah, we're both looking to improve and get better. And, yeah, I feel like having fun is first. If you're not having fun, then what's the point? Right. I think I really struggled last week in comparison to this week. I really struggled with um, if I came across someone playing in a different mode. So, like, pl- someone playing modern controls versus my classic controls, I yeah. would get really discouraged because... Modern enables a lot more than is possible in classic. Yeah, in some there's... in a lot of cases, so I would get kind of kind of disheartened when I would come across those matchups. But now I don't. I find I don't have as hard a time with that. Like all, in fact, I'll do really well against some modern players because we have a different game plan. Right, they're trying to just hit that assist button and get yeah. you with like a long so 40% combo that uses all of their resources. Yeah, and... they really are focusing on using those bars and it's, I guess it ends up just being a mental hurdle. Yeah, definitely. That's what it comes down to is just, yep. oh, they're on modern, whatever, you yeah, know. Whatever. 
got, let's get through it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I don't find myself struggling as badly against that, which is thankfully because that was my biggest hurdle. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, it's definitely been getting better. It's been, uh, I feel like we've both been improving. I think so. I agree. If there's uh, anybody out there that wants to uh, school a jury or a Jamie player, I guess hit us up on Twitter. Yeah, show us how it's done. So good stuff, good stuff. We're we're still enjoying it and just pushing ourselves in ranked mode, I would say. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So hopefully by That's this... Little update. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's episode of Wake Up 3. Thanks so much for listening. You can find me, Molly, on Twitter at Concut, that's K-A-H-N-K-U-T, or on PlayStation, that's Jam Michaels. And you can find me, Cam, on Twitter or most other social media at Big Rock Online. And you can find the podcast at Wake Up 3 FGC on Twitter or on Spotify and YouTube. This is Wake Up 3, signing off. Bye. Yeah, today I wanted to talk to you about Reptile, the very first fighting game character. <laughs> the very first. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs>